Doctor Reform Advocate Claudia Sheely to the show. Welcome, Mark. Thank you, Claudia. Thank you. Thank you. Talk to me for a second because I, 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 I don't know. I'm finishing the show, and in my own mind, I'm a little confused. I'm going to go home and have a very locked and serious conversation with my fiance about what we have to now do is start looking at every single thing and aspect of me to figure out whether or not I'm an acceptable candidate to adopt a child. I guess if I was, and I'm sorry, I'm going to say it this way just to be nasty, but if I was a white Caucasian female actress, I can get a baby from anywhere in the world I want. I was going to say, you're but, still on TV. Yeah, well, you but, should be able to do but something. But I'm not a female. It doesn't work that way. And I'm a uh, black male in America, so I'm just wondering whether or not I got to, to worry about some special circumstances. how deep your wallet is. Really? I think and now so. let's talk about that because yes. 35000 50000 40000 30, 40, 50000 dollars <coughs> Is not the process a process of buying a baby? Well, it makes people very uncomfortable to put an economic reality on the concept of adoption because then it does talk about buying a baby. And people don't want it to be about buying a baby. You know, it is supposed to be a social institution. A benevolent it's, thing. Exactly. It's supposed to be, you know, you mentioned adoption and people say, oh, just like you said in the beginning of the show, actually, what about all those baby, all those children that need homes? And it's very true. There are a large number of children in this our own country that do need homes. Mm -hmm. The difference is there are three main types of adoption. You have your foster care adoption, where children have already been removed from the home due to abuse and neglect and are, for the most part, out there waiting. Those are your waiting children. Unfortunately, those aren't the kids that most people want. People want babies. So you have your international adoptions, where they're not always babies, but we, you know, you can get them younger. Um, but what's nice about that is the majority of agencies will pretty much say, okay, you might have to jump through this hoop, and you might have to pay this amount of money, and you might have to, you know, go travel on um, a second's notice. When we say go, you go, but you're going to have a baby at the end. And yes, there are horror stories with everything, but at the end, according to this, and what people like about international adoption is that you don't have to deal so much with the birth parents changing their minds. Then you have infant adoption in America, which is domestic infant placement. And that is a whole other ball of wax. And with which that... Which people have been saying to us, I get letters about, which is the horror story. Which is, I mean, why is it a horror story for us to adopt here in America an American citizen to adopt an American baby, but it's not... And, and, and then we get horrified when we hear that the Chinese government has now just said, if you're overweight, they if mean, you're ugly, <laughs> you don't have any money, you can't they have a baby. That. They did change uh, the requirements, though. Okay, all right, let's take a break. When we come back, sure. let's talk about this, because you're an advocate for changing adoption laws. I want to change the law so that another family never has to go through this. Now, what do we have to do to get to that point? There's a lot to do. I bet. Let me take a break. We'll be back right after this. You know, without even without even doing anything on an international stage, for whatever reason right now, the sentiment around the world seems to be tighten its borders and stop Americans from stealing our kids. So this may force Americans to look within the United States. Um, you know, by tightening also a lot of the issues involving in domestic infant adoption, we'd also at that point be basically funneling people into having to actually get the children out of the foster care and promote that, and therefore we don't hear about as many waiting children anymore. Um, well, how do we do that? Well, the problem with infant adoption in America, basically, and for all adoption, really, is that it's a business. It is a profit-driven business, and money is the root of everything. And you really need to look at that. Um, in 2000, there was an independent study group that put the value at adoption at 1.4 billion, billion, and that 1. was in 2000. 1.4 billion dollar industry with 11.5 percent growth rate. So if you do the math, even at that very conservative number, we're looking at over three billion dollars by the end of this year. It's an industry, and it's the largest unregulated industry in this country. There's the foxes in the hen house, and nobody's guarding the door. You know, there's a whole patchwork of state laws. Um, the first adoption law that was made in this country in Massachusetts in the 1800s gave it all the power to the states. 
So you have 50 states with 50 different laws. How, how can I, okay, knowing that, you know what you just said, man, you drive me crazy, because that means I have to go to 50 different states, look through 50 different laws, try to figure out which state's going to let me have a baby. Ah, where can I go to just say I want to have a child? I have the ability to take care of a child. I have the ability to afford to be a parent to a child. I've been a good parent. Let me have a baby. What am I going to do? I can't answer that because that's not the fact that And to me, right there, the fact that that can't be answered is probably one of the most uh, disgusting atrocities in this country today. Well... Now, wait, wait, Jeffrey, can you answer it? You might tell me I can go to your state, and it might, but you know what? I mean, uh, every state's different. I don't live in Florida. I live in New York. New York's going to tell me it's going to take me four years to get a baby. For whatever reason. And I know it. I, I've already asked that question in a couple different places. I'm going to go, I'll be doing paperwork for the next three years before I ever even get considered in this state. So that means i got to go someplace else. Where do I go? Do I go overseas? Well, unfortunately, New York is a very unique circumstance because... All of them are unique. Well, your state's attorney general's office has made a decision uh, that says that you cannot adopt if you're a citizen of the state of New York from outside of the state of New York unless the agency or attorney that you're working with outside of the state of New York is licensed by New York. The attorney general would not require me to pay an attorney in the state unless they knew that the attorney's fees in the state are probably higher than the other states when it comes to adoption. This is ignorant. But let's say for the most part everybody in New York who wants to adopt has to adopt from within New York, then it's a a demand for people's time issue that raises the, the fees in the first place. So it's completely wrong. It's not fair to the citizens of New York, and it's unconstitutional. We take a break. We'll be back right after this. All right, I'm out of time, so I want to make sure we don't end this show without giving some people some helpful hints. So, Jeffrey, you have four kind of things. There's plenty more that you need to do, but I like this. Number one, do your homework, right? Absolutely. Uh, you need to f talk to people, find out who's had good experiences with, with different agencies. Is it a guarantee that you're going to have a good experience? No way. But it's a start. It's a start, all right? So, number two, be realistic. And that one I want you to talk, talk about for a second. Well, be realistic. I mean, you know, the, the, the so-called typical uh, prospective adoptive family who wants to adopt domestically in this country... Uh, or starts their process wanting to adopt a healthy Caucasian newborn. That's the, the, the term that you hear from time to time. And you have to be realistic. Not everybody who is pregnant and placing a baby for adoption lives a perfectly healthy lifestyle. And if you reject a situation wherein there's a behavior that might not seem perfect to you, you might not ever end up adopting. Okay, and then you have to stay involved. Absolutely. Adoption is a lot about teamwork. Um, review the medical records for, if you're adopting a, a, a newborn from a, a woman who's pregnant domestically. Uh, review the medical records w uh, that, that are sent to you by the adoption professionals, which they ought to be, by the way, redacted to, to honor the confidentiality of the birth mother. Gotcha. And also go with your gut. You know what I mean by that? Absolutely. If something seems too good to be true, a lot of times it is. It's not always, but go with your gut. If your gut instinct tells you somebody's trying to sell you something or somebody's ju it just doesn't sound right, go with your gut. You also made a comment I thought was a very good one earlier uh, or to my producers about the fact that a lot of times couples come in looking to adopt and they haven't even taken the time to have a, have a discussion about what kind, what baby is that they want. With the ba you know, the, whether they want a baby who's international. They come in and argue that out right in front of you. Shouldn't the couple spend some time sitting down, discussing, talking, all options, making sure every option that could possibly be available, they've at least discussed? Absolutely. I think that before you go uh, seek the assistance of an adoption professional, you should have a discussion about what type of adoption is realistic for your family, bearing in mind that the bottom line, the whole thing, is always the best interest of the child. As far as I'm concerned and as far as any prospective adoptive family ought to be concerned. But there are transracial adoptions. There are lots of different issues involved in adoption that should be discussed before a consultation with a professional. Well, we're out of time, so I want to thank you both and thank all of you for being here on the show today because I think this has been extremely informative. And for those people at home that have been watching, I do not want you to take away from the show that we're saying don't attempt to adopt. There are children out here who could use a loving home, caring parents. We know that for a fact. But... Here I go. But, just like with a lot of things I say on the show, buyer beware. Period. I'm out of time. Join us on the next one, though.